welcome to yet another episode of Marketing for Founders. Today we are going to talk about the process of increasing in size. Wait a second, don't be confused. I'm specifically talking about growth. Every founder out there is looking for growth. We're going to discuss driving growth in a cookie-less world in today's episode. My name is Ajish Venugopalan and I'm the founder and CEO for AJ and VG Media. various data protection laws coming in uh, by countries or states or from different geographies, from different industrial bodies, how is it going to impact a founder or how is it going to impact a business? First and foremost, they're trying to do is protect the rights of the consumer. And why, why are they also coming up with the data protection laws? Because there is a sense of security threat from country to country. For instance, you know, a country can be threatened uh, threatened by its neighbor. So to, in order to protect different territorial boundaries and the interest of the consumers, various data protection acts have started coming in line. And the biggest way that it is going to impact a founder is going to, it's going to prohibit you from serving personalized advertisement. There are two sides to the privacy debate. On one end, you have policy regulators or countries or states which are deciding uh, what rules and regulations should they put in place to guard yours and mine's personally identifiable information, which is called PII, right? On, on the other end, you have advertisers, tech companies, which are trying to understand how they can make sure that they can work within these rules and frameworks that have been set by the policy regulators. Uh, to give an ex example, for instance, Safari, uh, which is one of the most popular browsers out there owned by Apple, put a host of rules and regulations uh, to govern their uh, browser. So they have cross-site, uh, they've stopped cross-site tracking, they've stopped cookie-based tracking, uh, they're hiding users' IP address, right? And they have put safeguards in place to make sure that uh, users are not shown personalized ads, right? And as a result, uh, the, there is a lot of hue and cry from companies like Facebook and others uh, because their whole business depends on showing personalized content to users. Suraj has just iterated that Apple's Safari browser has already prohibited uh, cross-tracking and prohibited the cookies. What are the founders really going to do if that happens? And, and very soon, Mozilla Firefox's and Google Chrome's uh, of the world are going to prohibit uh, the cookies as well. That essentially means that you will no longer be able to rely on third-party data sources and it will prevent you from serving customized ads. The only way that you can ensure that you, you reach out to the right prospects or you, you reach out to the right set of target audience is by collecting first-party data. Let me help you understand what first-party first data means. Any data that has come in through your website, any data that has come in through your own mobile app that you're using or selling in the market is your first party data. This can be collected using a newsletter, this can be collected using an enquiry form, or this can be collected using a simple registration. But the fact is it has to happen directly on your flat platform. Then it becomes the first party data. Now the current data governance laws or data protection laws are going to force all the business owners out there to relook at your investment priorities and we suggest that you prioritize your investments on data platforms. So Ajish mentioned the importance of having first party data. What exactly is first party data? First party is data is all the personally identifiable information that you have about your target audience. Name, email address, phone number, designation, name of the company that you work for. So let's assume you've collected this data, right? You collected this data from your, uh, your website, your application, right? The more important question that you should ask yourself is how do you manage this data, right? Uh, so most companies have something called as a data governance framework, which focuses on making sure that the data that you collect is current, complete and up to date. Uh, why is this important? So let's say, for instance, you have a database of around 30, 40,000 contacts, right? What you will notice on a regular basis is that the email IDs are inaccurate. So you have hard bounces and soft bounces or somebody has retired from a company or 
uh, somebody is no longer with the company right so what do you do in that case not having a data governance framework would mean that you will constantly run into challenges when you are run, when you are running email marketing campaigns so say for instance you are you you have an email marketing solution which you send which you use for sending out emailers what you also need to do is build a marketing technology stack to make sure that your data governance framework actually works so you need email validation tools to make sure that the email addresses that you are collecting are valid right what an email validation tool does is it sends a ping to your server to check whether the email id actually exists or not besides this you also need to enrich your data how do you enrich your data you you have somebody's email address and now you want to know which company they work for and uh, um, uh, which what what is their current designation or you want additional details technographic and infographic data about this contact right so you have to uh, do integrations with apollo lucia slintel other database uh, third party database providers to enrich the data that you have right so ultimately what are you trying to do you are trying to make sure that the data that you have is the most accurate and the complete data that you have about your customers and with the technology stack that you are building in place you are making sure that uh, the 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 database is constantly cleansed and enriched right besides this some manual clean clean up might also be needed right if you are sending out an email and you see hard bounces and soft bounces you would want to make sure that these the these data points are removed from your database because in most cases uh, as far as email marketing is concerned you are paying per contact right and the lower the number of contacts the lesser money you pay in terms of uh, running your marketing campaigns right so uh, uh, i'm reemphasizing the fact that if you are maintaining first party uh, data make sure that you have a data cleansing data enrichment program which is backed by a good good data governance framework uh, which needs to be followed while uh, suraj has emphasized on data governance which is a process that ideally fits in after you have started gathering your first party data i'm going to briefly touch upon how do you really go about collecting first party data and you have multiple channels available with you uh, depending on your business one is primarily your website two could be your different ways of lead generation strategies that you apply third could be your mobile app and so and so forth but in order to uh, attract a customer um you should be able to provide great value to the customer unless and until you give great give great value and engage with the prospect or the customer right in the right way they are not going to give give their permission Uh, or they're not going to agree to you using the data to send them personalized uh, sales promotional uh, campaigns. So first and foremost, you should have a great marketer who will drive great customer engagement strategy. Now, in order to drive a great customer engagement strategy, we primarily need two things. One is great content without saying. Two, you need automation technology. And while you can do this online there are offline tactics as well to engage customers and create meaningful relationship with them some of those could be events or customer round tables or creating a customer advisory board and so and so forth or simply by sending them a very very sensible meaningful newsletter pro as long as you stick to the quality of the content so these are some of the tactics that you can do but but one of my favorite our uh, methodologies of creating first party data is community building while uh, we will come again uh, with a different episode on community marketing let me sort of try and also emphasize a bit on uh, real time customer engagement uh, online so there are multiple technologies which you can use to uh, understand the click stream data on your website and basis the click stream data you can drive various use cases and engage with them using a sing- simple poll to an inquiry form to a video to dynamic content rendering all those features are available in terms of um, allowing you to create great online customer engagement strategy as well having said that once you've got this data even before you get into data governance it's quite important for you to look at integration possibilities you should integrate this data with your crm and you should also look at uh, integrating that data with your campaign management tool that that you are probably using so that you are able to disseminate this information in the most effective way we will come again with yet another episode of marketing for founders until then this is ajish venugopalan 
Thank you very much.